Hi guys, it's Carl here again from Let's Talk Retro. I hope I find you all well. And today I'd like to talk to you about this, the pocket chip computer, and more importantly, playing games on it. So firstly, for those of you that don't know what the pocket chip computer is, I shall just uh, fill you in a little bit. This thing started off as a Linux-based $9 computer called the Chip, sort of a rival or a similar thing to the Raspberry Pi, or maybe the Raspberry Pi Zero is a more accurate description. And uh, basically the people that made it, the next thing co decided what they wanted to do was to put it into a plastic housing and make it completely portable by adding a, a touchscreen, a keyboard, a battery, and then of course the chip computer itself, which just fits in here, and you can take it in and out as if you want to use it for other things. It takes a bit of getting out, but you can get it out. Uh, this thing today is supposed to be $69, but you can order it from their website, getchip.com, for just $49 at the moment. It's on pre-order. supposed to be starting to ship this month, which is July, and uh, so you should be able to get your hands on one of these soon. So once you've ordered one of these, it'll turn up in a lovely box like this. I love the design of this box. It uh, looks really retro, really sort of like something you would have bought in the 70s. And on the front it says games, music, Linux terminal and much, much more. On the back you've got a get started guide. So once you've got that out of the box, you can read that and get going straight away. Um, on this side it's got some specs. So it says it comes with a chip computer, so that's good. It's 3000 mAh battery. There's a 4.3 inch 480 pixel by 272 pixel touchscreen. A four super clicky QWERTY keyboard. Uh, a rugged injection molded shell. Fully open source. Uh, GPI breakouts. And that uh, the chip is removable as I've already said. Uh, so the actual specs of the chip is it's uh, got Wi-Fi. Uh, it's a one gigahertz processor. A uh, four gigabyte high speed storage, 512 megabytes of RAM, Bluetooth 4.0, and the chip works with any display. So uh, that's all about the chip then. So uh, let's go on about talking about playing games on it. So, probably the easiest and most interesting way if you ask me to start playing games on your pocket chip is by using the Pico 8 software or the Pico 8 app which is just the one here in the middle. It comes pre-installed on your pocket chip when you get it, so you, you're gonna have it straight away out of the box. And uh, yeah, you just click on that, and it takes you into a little sort of area where you can play games, thousands of games that have been made by other people. Um, once you've got fed up of playing their games, you can go into them if you like, and you can actually edit them using some inbuilt tools, and some commands called Lua commands. Uh, to actually make your own, or make their games your own, if you like. You can change the colour scheme, change the graphics, change the sound, and completely make a game your own. Um, and failing that, if you're feeling really clever, you can actually go in and build your own game from scratch and then share it with everybody else on there as well. So that's, if you ask me, like what, where the sort of strength is for gaming, actually, with the pocket chip at the moment. And uh, let's just go over and take a look at some of the uh, games that I've enjoyed playing on it so far. So first up we've got a platformer called Celeste and this is a nice little cute platformer um, which I'm not very good at. I've seen other people play it, it looks really good and uh, I have managed to get off this screen probably about once. Um, but yeah, it's, it is a good platformer, I'm just not very good at it. I think it's the controls on the uh, pocket chip, the keyboard, it just doesn't work very well for me. Um, on certain games and this is one of them I'm afraid so but yeah it looks good when other people play it if you ask me. Next up we have Dusk Child and this is definitely one of my favourites. Uh, the controls on this are much easier and it's a nice little, like, little platform puzzle game uh, so a platformer with puzzles involved and uh, these spikes down the bottom here they don't hurt you as long as you don't land on them you can walk through them if you land on them then they kill you. And yeah, so here's the first puzzle you come across in the game. This is the sort of thing you come across. Here's the door you can't get through. So you need to pop down to the bottom here, walk through these spikes, pick up the orb, which is this green blob down here, then uh, come back up, jump back up, making sure you don't land on the spikes at any point because they're going to kill you. 
and see if I can just make this jump a long last and then you just put the ore down on this little thing here which pulls at the door and you can jump back down to the bottom and carry on with your adventure. So the graphics are quite nice and it's a game I'm going to go back and play a lot more of. Next up we've got Pico Racer 2048. Now this reminds me of a sort of top-down wipeout game. You've got a spaceship that you've got to take around the course and obviously the idea in any racing game is to become first. Uh, some nice vector graphics going on and uh, it's a game I've enjoyed playing. I'm looking forward to playing it a lot more over the coming weeks and coming months and trying to improve because as you can tell it's another game that I've not really got the hang of yet. I'm not really uh, going to be winning any races very soon I don't think. But yeah, it's another good game. So this is another favourite of mine, Puzzle Cave, Raiders of the Lost Potato. And the idea is you have to go and eat these potatoes so a key appears so you can get out of the, the, the room that you're locked in. And uh, it gets starts off easy. You've just got to move these diamonds about as well. Uh, once you've got all the potatoes, the key appears and you can... Uh, get out of the room with through the exit but as you move these diamonds about you can eventually start to block yourself in or block the potatoes in so you can't get to them so you have to restart the level and uh, so you really have to start thinking about where you're moving these diamonds to and now you're going to actually be able to get around once you've moved them and uh, it starts off very easy it doesn't take you long to get up to you know about level five six like i am here um but it's the as soon as it starts to get bit more brain taxing and uh, you find yourself making mistakes and blocking yourself in. Uh, I think this is a level I haven't done before actually, I don't think I've been on this one. So I'm just going to take a bit of care and think about where I'm moving these diamonds to because otherwise I'm not going to be able to complete the level. I think I'm doing alright, just Wondering where the key's going to appear as well. I'm not sure where the key's going to appear, so I could block myself in and get into the key as well. See this one, there's the key. I think I'm alright. Yeah. So, as you can see, it gets a bit brain taxing quite quickly, but it's another good game. This is a game I've played a few times Rise and Shine Professor Niggles. And the idea is you've got a time limit going down. The longer you stay in bed, the score goes up. And you've got to try and grab all the clues before the time limit runs out to get out. So that was Monday with Justin. If you see at the top of the screen, it was changed to Tuesday. I'm not going to hang around in bed this time. I'm going to get out and try and get these as quickly as possible because they're spread about everywhere. And then uh, we come on to Wednesday. Any minute now. And as you can see, they're in a quite a straight line. So I'm going to try and stay in bed a bit longer. You can see the score going up in the right-hand corner. Grab the bits, come and get it, get it, get it, get it, go, go, oh, no, Wednesday, late for work. So uh, moving on to Thursday, see if we can do a bit better. So well spread out, going to get straight on with this. And uh, get out the door, come and get out the door, get out the door. <laughs> oh, that was close. So uh, now on to Friday. Again, well spread out, not going around in bed too long. So I'm going to try and grab all this stuff that he needs before he goes to work. Get the cup. Oh, late for work on Friday. Nothing new there then. Uh, yeah, so it's another quite good game. It gives you a final score at the end. It's just a little fun game that I've enjoyed playing. So here's another game I've had a lot of fun with, and that's Stray Shot. And uh, you get a different amount of score for the different enemies that you kill. And basically every time you do a shot, if it goes astray, it creates another enemy. So things can get quite busy and quite hectic quite quickly in this game. Uh, you've got to take your time and try not to do too many stray shots. So as I take my first shot, you see that's a stray shot, obviously, because there's nothing to hit. So a ghost appears, and I've taken him out. And there's two more stray shots because there's nothing to kill. So we've got two enemies now to kill. So you want to take your time to begin with and try not to do any stray shots. That yellow guy's just sort of shot that blob at me so they can shoot back at you. And uh, as I've done a few stray shots, we've now got a few more enemies on the way and uh, those red not red the orange guys i've had a problem with them i don't know they've got some sort of shield that comes up you can see you can't shoot them i've not worked out how to kill them yet and uh, i've done a few more stray shots so we're getting a few more 
enemies come in and I've been killed. <laughs> so that wasn't even very hectic actually, but so I'll do it again. I'll fire off a load of shots so you can see how hectic it can get. Um, and busy and get rather quickly on this grid. And uh, as you can see, I'm struggling to get away from them already. <laughs> that guy's just shot me as easy as that. But it's a, a fun game again. So that was a look at some of my Pico 8 favourite games I've come across so far. There's thousands on there. I'm sure I'm going to find loads more games on there to uh, play very soon. And uh, I'm looking forward to delving into that and having a good look through and finding some more good games to play. But uh, yeah, so I'm sure a lot of you are probably thinking, can you play emulators on this thing? Or use emulators on this thing to emulate your favourite games? And uh, the answer is yes, you can. But at the moment, things are a bit sort of sketchy on what's working and what's not working. Um, there's people that are trying to iron out all the problems. If you go on the message boards, they're sort of trying to get them run in and they're trying things. So I'm sure it won't be long before all the sort of problems are ironed out and sort of this will be pretty good for doing emulation. But at the moment, it's a bit sketchy. Uh, one that I have got running on here and it plays pretty well is um, SCEUX, which is a NES emulator. Um, it does have a little bit of slowdown every now and then, um, so, but it's, it's not bad. It's basically most games on it run, they, they are playable. You can actually play the game, so it's not bad. But uh, like I say, it's early days and I'm sure, a bit like the Raspberry Pi, it had some software written basically for it, hasn't it? Like the RetroPie um, emulation station uh, and then there's um, PlayPie as well. So um, maybe something will be written like that for uh, this very soon. So I'm sure emulation will be a big part of uh, the pocket chip once things get going. And of course, finally, there's uh, Linux-based games that actually will run on this system. One which is uh, running really well on it and I've got installed on here is Doom. Uh, the version of Doom you want to look for is uh, PR Boom. I'll put some uh, instructions in the description of the video on how to actually get Doom on there and how to actually install the emulator I was on about SCEUX um, in the description. So uh, if you want to do that, the, the instructions of that will be in the description to the video. Um, but yeah, so the Doom runs pretty well on here. I haven't had any problems with it. Uh, no slowdown. It just plays, plays really nice. Looks nice on the actual screen as well. So, um, and I know there's people that have been watching other channels and they're trying these games out and seeing which Linux-based games will run on the pocket chip. There's some that won't and there's some that will. Uh, but again, it's still very early days, so uh, hopefully there'll be a lot more games like that running on here soon as well. So, uh, after all that, would I recommend the pocket chip as a portable gaming system is the question I'm going to ask myself. And probably the answer is no. Uh, if, like me, I've not just bought it for games, I bought it because I want to do have a Linux-based uh, computer that I can just take anywhere with me, use anywhere, on the go, and that there's going to be, I'm sure there's going to be lots of different things that you can do with this, little sort of projects I'm looking forward to doing, modding it and all sorts of things over the coming months. Um, um, just the fact that I can play games on it, to me, is just an added bonus. And, but if you had the Pico 8 software, I mean, that normally costs $14.99 if you are boiling that for Mac or Windows. Um, so to get it on here pre pre installed completely free is uh, quite quite good and uh, I'm quite actually interested in playing around with that a bit more. So if you're interested in Pico 8 and having a system that you can play that on the go, then yeah, it's probably worth buying for that. Um, the other thing for playing games on it is the keyboard. If you're using it for inputting stuff in the terminal, the keyboard's fine. It works okay. Uh, but for playing games, this here is like your, your D-pad, and I find it's just all too close together, um, and I can't just cannot control things with it. Um, I find it really hard to do to control the games with. Um, I've tried different configurations on the keyboard. You can change that, but I still find that these keys are all just a little bit too close together. And I've not got fat fingers; they're quite thin. So that is um, a downside for me for gaming on it. Obviously you could plug into the USB port on the top of it, you could plug in a controller or a mouse. I've seen someone playing Doom with a mouse, which worked pretty well. Uh, but if you're gonna have to take a controller with you on the go to plug in to play games again, sort of, it's not really the point. It doesn't make it so portable, does it? Um, the other thing is there's not a speaker on this, so you have to have the sound coming from the headphone socket on the top. So if you're playing games, it's got some great sound. The retro sounds on this thing is actually pretty good. And it's also got a music maker as well, So, uh, but you have to plug the headphones in to uh, be able to hear any sound. I've seen some people have modded it and added their own speaker. There's probably guys that are doing that online as I speak. 
Um, but yeah, so that's just two downfalls for me for it as a gaming system as well. Um, is that you find the keys hard to use and also the uh, fact that it's not got a speaker. But I'm sure things will improve, you know, I'm sure things will get better. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes, looking forward to playing around with it, especially the Pico 8 software. So yeah, that's, uh, so if you want a computer that, or a Linux-based computer that you can play some games on as well, it's worth getting. And also it's worth getting maybe for the Pico 8 software if you're really interested in that. So guys, that is the end of my little look at the pocket chip computer. Um, I'm going to enjoy playing around with it, I'm sure, in the coming months. Uh, if you decide to get one, or if you've got one, or you've got some comments or something you wanted to add, if you don't agree with me with the keyboard or something, just, just put it in the comments, let me know, I'll be glad to hear them and uh, uh, give a little chat to you about it and let other people know what you think about the pocket chip as well as just my views. I mean, they're just my views at the end of the day, so um, if you've got some views on it, let everybody know in the comments. But until next time, guys, stay safe, keep playing, and as always, keep it retro. And I'll see you soon.